Hi, welcome to the fourth session on the area of computation. In this video lecture, we will discuss about the set theory, the mathematical foundation necessary to understand the concepts in theory of computation. So, what is a set? Set is a collection of elements. Say, for example, A is a set with three elements, one, two, three. And B is a set that includes all modes of transportation, say train, bus, bicycle, aeroplane. And notationally, we write one belongs to A. To refer to the members of the set, I will say one belongs to A. And if an element does not belong to a set, we write the belong to symbol and strike it out. So, we write ship does not belong to B since ship is not present in this set B. Now, how can we represent sets? What are the ways by which we can write the sets? One is explicitly enumerating the members of the set. That is explicitly writing down or listing down the elements of the set. Say for example, C is A, B, C, D, etc. We, we didn't say etc. Okay, I have explicitly written all the members till K. Otherwise, I can write it like C is equal to A, B, comma, etc. So, this is an ellipsis which stands for etc till K. So, if it is a known sequence, I can write it like this, putting up three dots in between the members of the elements of the set. Now, I have specified the ending. I have started with A and I have represented the second element B. So, I know that I am going in sequence with the English alphabets and then I end it in the alphabet K. And this is called finite set because I can count the number of elements in the set. For infinite sets, we use the ellipsis at the end. I start say 2, the next element is 4 and then 6 and it goes on. Okay, And this is called infinite set because I cannot count the number of elements in this set because the set itself has infinite number of elements. So, what is this set? Uh, yes, indicates it's a even number and all, all, all the numbers are positive. The same set I can write it like this. S is equal to set of all j's such that j is greater than 0 and j is equal to some 2k for some k greater than 0. So, the positive nature of the members of the set is indicated by j greater than 0. And j being even is indicated by j is equal to 2k. And k is greater than 0. So, when k takes the value 1, we get the element 2. When k is uh, 2, we get the element 4 and so on. The same set, we can write it this way. Set s is equal to set of all j such that j is non-negative and even. So, all the three notations represent the same set. So, next is the concept of universal set. So, taken a domain, the set of all possible elements in that domain is called the universal set. Say for example, I have considered the set of integers from 1 to 10 as my universe here. So, the rectangular box is the universal set. So, I have all the elements 1, 2, 3 up to 10 listed inside that. And um, we are taking a set A which is just having 5 elements from 1 to 5. So, this set A is inside this universal set. Next is set operations. I will consider two sets A and B. A has 3 elements 1, 2, 3 and B has 4 elements 2, 3, 4, 5. The set operation union is defined between this A and B. We write the union as this symbol. So, A union B is a set. The resultant of the union of two sets A and B is another set wherein the members of the union come from either from A or B or both. Okay, So, that is the meaning of union. So, the A union B here will result in the elements of A 1, 2, 3. I have written it here. 
and 2, 3, 4, 5 I have to include here but 2 is already listed. We need not repeat that element so I can simply write 3, uh, sorry 4 and 5 here. So A union B will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and pictorially you can see it here. A is like this, B is like this, B is a bigger set co compared to A because it has 4 elements and there are some common elements so they are overlapping. So, the union include all the elements from the shaded area. An intersection of two sets, A intersection B, we write it like this and is a set again and the resultant set is the set of elements which are common between this A and B. So, here what is common between A and B? 2 and 3 are present both in A and B. So, we have A intersection B to be 2 and 3. So, I have set A, I have set B and what is common between them is the overlapping area. So, that is the intersection result. The next operation is difference. So, we write A difference B. That means that I want to find the difference of set B with respect to A. That is what this means. A difference B. Difference of set B with respect to A. What, what is the result? The result is again a set. I have to include the elements of A and remove the elements which are present in B. So, I will when I write A difference B, I will consider the elements of A and remove the elements of B if it is present. So, 2 is present, so I will strike out 2 and 3 is present, I will remove 3. So, what is left out? Only 1 is left out. That is the meaning of A difference B. What is the meaning pictorially? So, I have A difference B, the shaded region. Okay, I have the elements of A and what is common between A and B, I will just remove that. I will remove the elements of B from A. So, that is the result of this, the shaded area. A result of A difference B. And B difference A is difference of A with respect to B. So, I will include all the elements from B and remove whatever elements I have from A. So, I have 2, 3, 4, 5 from B and I have to remove the elements of A if present. So, 2, 3 is available in A. So, I will strike out this 2 and 3. The result is only 4 and 5. And one thing to note here is that difference is not commutative. Unlike this union, A union B is equal to B union A. Because how do we compute union? Union, the result of union comes from the elements of A and the elements of B and or it can be present in both A and B. That is what the result of A union B. So, whether you compute A union B or B union A is the same. So, it is commutative but whereas the difference is not commutative. The result of A difference B is different from the result of B difference A. The next operation is complement. Complement is nothing but it is a set difference with respect to the universal set. So, consider a universal set which has members from 1 to 7 and a set A whose members are 1, 2 and 3. So, what is A complement? It is universal set difference A. So, you have to include the elements from the universal set and remove the elements which are available in A. So, you have 4, 5, 6, 7 as the result. So, pictorially you have it here. The universal set is represented in this rectangle. It has uh, the elements of A, 1, 2, 3 and uh, it includes other elements 4, 5, 6 and 7. So, you have to include all the elements from the universal set and remove the elements of A. So, you will remove what is in the white area. And the result is the gray area. So, if you take the complement of the gray area, what will you get? You will get the uh, set A. So, it is complement of, double complement of A is A itself. The next is an example for complement. If you consider the set of all integers as the universal set, 
you can uh, divide the set of all integers into two disjoint sets one is the set of even integers the other is the set of odd integers so you have odd numbers and you have even numbers and if you take the complement of even integers what you will have is odd numbers okay that is the gray area if you take the complement of odd integers you will result in even integers and this is important law de morgan laws you can compute the a union b the whole complement as a complement intersection b complement okay we can uh, see it from this picture a union b is this shaded area and its complement will be what is in the white background. So that is A union B the complement, whole complement. And that can be computed by A complement. You will exclude A and include everything else. Okay. So uh, you whatever you have in A that you will exclude and all that is in the white background is A complement. And similarly, you will exclude B and whatever is left that is the B complement, the white area. So the intersection of this, what is common between these two things is the result of this because A is not avail present in this one and B is not available here. So this two rings you will eliminate as in this left hand side and the complement of A union B will be the white region. Similarly, you can compute A intersection B the whole complement by the union of A complement and B complement. Uh, so, A intersection B is this region and its complement will be the white region here in the picture. And uh, you can get it by the union of A complement and B complement. So, this region is available, the B region is available here and A region here comes from this one, okay. And what is common between A and B that is not uh, included in both the cases. So, that will not be coming into the result. Next, we will see what is empty or null set. It is denoted by the phi symbol. So, it, it is a set with no elements, which has no elements. That is a empty set or a null set. So, take any set S. Yes. If you make a union of S yes with the null set, since there are no elements in the null set, whatever elements you have in S, yes, that is what you get here. Similarly, if you take intersection of the null set with S, yes, since there is no element in null set, there is nothing common between S yes and null set so the result will be a null set if you take the difference of the null set with respect to the set s yes, you will include the elements from s yes and remove the elements available in null set since there is no element in null set the result will be the set s yes. if you take the other way the null set difference s yes, you don't have anything in null set so that will be the result and if you take the complement of null set, that will be the universal set. The next is the subset. Consider two sets, A and B. A has the elements 1, 2 and 3. B has the elements 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now I can write A is a subset of B. The notation is this one. And A is a subset of B. Why I can write it like this? Because I have all the elements of A available in B. So, 1, 2, 3 is available in B as well. So, I can say A is a subset of B. And B is a superset of A. Because B has much more elements than B. No, sorry, B has much more elements than A. And I can write A is a proper set, subset of B like this. I will remove this equal to sign here. In this case, uh, 1, 2, 3 is a smaller set and I have all these elements available in B. 
and B is a bigger set compared to A and B has all the elements from A and it has more. So, I can say A is a proper subset of B. In this case, A can be even same as that of B. If I wanted to write it like this, A is a subset of B. So, A can be same as that of B as well. But if I wanted to write it like this, A has to be strictly having less elements compared to B and all the elements of A should be available in B. And pictorially, this is the representation. I have the set A and I have set B including all the elements of A and I have more elements also available in B. So, the property of disjoint sets. So, disjoint, I can say two sets are disjoint if their intersection is null set. That is, I have no elements in common between them. Consider for example, A is a set with three elements, 1, 2 and 3 and B is another set with two elements, 5 and Z and there is no, no elements in common between them. That is, if I take the intersection of A and B, the result will be a null set. So, A is a set and B is another set and there is no overlapping between them. That Such sets are called disjoint sets. The next is the set cardinality. So, this is defined only for finite set because the set cardinality is nothing but the number of elements available in a set. That is the set cardinality. So, the set A if you consider has 3 elements 2, 5 and 7. So, the cardinality of A is 3. So, the cardinality is nothing but the number of elements in a set. So, the power set is nothing but set of all subsets of the set is called the power set. Say for example, uh, S is a set with three elements A, B and C. Now, the power set of S is the set of all subsets of S. So, how can we form the subsets? Uh, the empty set is a subset of this one. And I can form singleton set with one element each. A is a subset of A, B, C and B is a subset of the set S and C is a subset of uh, the set A, B, C and so on. And, and then I can form two elements uh, for each set. A, B is one set and A, C is another set and B, C is another set and then A, B, C is a subset of A, B, C itself. Okay, So, I can list out all these elements. And this is the power set of S. Okay, the power set we denoted by 2 power S because uh, if you consider the cardinality of the power set of S, it is nothing but the 2 power the cardinality of S. So, here the cardinality of S is 3 because I have 3 elements. So, the cardinality of power set of S will be 2 power 3 which is 8. If you count the elements here, I have 1 null set, 3 singleton set, so 4 elements and 3 subsets with 2 elements each and 1 set with all the elements. So, totally we have 8 elements in the power set of S. And the last operation that we will see is the Cartesian product. It is defined between 2 sets. So, we denote it by A cross B which is a set of tuples A comma B such that the element A comes from the set A and the element B comes from the set B. So, we can write A cross B as 2 comma 2. This 2 comes from the set A and the second 2 comes from the set B and then 2 comma 3 and then 2, this 2 is actually from set A. 2 comma 3, 2 comma 5, then 4 comma 2. 4 comma 3 and 4 comma 5. Sorry about this. This should be 4 comma 5. So, how, totally how many elements will be there in A cross B? It will be the number of elements in A that is the cardinality of A into the cardinality of B. So, totally 2 into 3, 6 elements will be there in the uh, Cartesian product of A and B. And we can generalize this to more than two sets as well. Suppose if I have one more set, 
C and I want to find A cross B cross C. So I, I can cross it with A cross B. The, we have a set and then I can cross this with the elements of the set C. Uh, so I think this is enough for us to understand the background of theory of computation. And I have taken all these slides uh, from Rensselaer Polytechnic uh, Institute. And in the next video, we will discuss about the proof, proving techniques necessary to understand the proofs in theory of computation. And then we will start with the uh, finite automata. Thank you for watching this video.